I think honestly, like with, with all that's, that's going on and this is perfect timing because question there that what are our opinions on the replacement that'll give Penn State a chance to have an exciting offense oh. the absolute first call that I'm making given what's going on in Boulder right now is to Sean Lewis uh yes. if I'm James Franklin I am going there he was excellent at Kent State like he is he was a mm-hmm. really good offensive mind hit the ceiling there took the offensive coordinator job at Colorado they were having a ton of success and then uh Deion Sanders demoted him uh, and made uh, Pat Shermer his co-offensive coordinator and seemingly took away play calling uh, duties, I would I would give Sean Lewis the keys to the car. Uh, that is potential for a high flying offense that that you know that that we haven't seen at Penn State since Joe Moorhead was there. Is that what it's going to take to unlock Dante Cephas? Yeah, honestly, that's a good connection. I hadn't thought about no, that yet. No, I, I actually because I, I tried to connect with Sean Lewis last year for a Cephas story, and that's yeah, that's that's why the name was kind of kind of fresh in my head um I, I think is i don't know james's like obviously i have no idea his list of candidates kind he of has a list though like i, I can mean, assure I, you I tomorrow he we'll list. hear we'll hear that he yeah, has oh, a list yeah. that he keeps in his desk we will hear that yes. at least once. he's got the little little black book or whatever it is i think yes. right um i do wonder and again this is why i feel like the next few weeks now just got a lot more interesting because of jaywan cider and because jaywan has been really loyal to him i do wonder yes how long and hard of a look they genuinely give Jay Wan. one because of his success as a recruiter and what he's been able to do with these running backs Two, the players love the guy. And I think that kind of helps steer you in the right direction. Uh, three on top of that, I think you look at, this is someone who has had opportunities to go elsewhere has said, no, still has head coaching aspirations, but also told us earlier this season that if his, if the rest of his career plays out and Jay Wan said, if I stay in at Penn state, I will be happy. So you might even be able to get that stability piece there too, depending. But as we saw last year, I mean, I think back to the defensive line job with Deion Barnes, right? James was interviewing everyone else and then was not really going to hire Deion Barnes. He even said as much this year, right? Like that was not the plan. And then last minute things changed. Uh, Other people had changed their their opinions on the job. And so then he hires Deion right before spring ball. So I I do wonder uh, just kind of internally, how long and hard of a look they, they give at Jaywan. And obviously Ty Hell's part of that as well, but Hell's much younger. Um, yeah. I know they do think he's kind of like the young, bright up and coming guy uh, who's also done a really nice job as a recruiter. Um, but yeah, to, to me, that's you start there. But in terms of the rest of that list, gosh, I have no idea. I mean, it, it could be, yeah. it could be anyone there. The, the only thing that I think is difficult if they promote from within, it's like, especially for maybe coaches that haven't been offensive coordinators before, it's like, well, how much of the offense then is just what they've been running in the past, right? And how much is, mm-hmm. okay, now James just really has his hands all over the offense, right? Like, I think yeah. probably, I'm assuming fans would like to see a coach come in from the outside that has their offense that they run mm-hmm. and just to have it be that offense that it doesn't have to be a melding of the mind situation that, that that coach gets to run their offense. Maybe terminology is similar to what it is now. So it's easier for the players to change it to transition. But outside of that, like I wonder if the complexity of the offense John, was an issue, like what are they going to do with this? 700 signals. We just heard it last week. They've got over 700 signals on that offense. <laughs> so I, think know, about, I again, in terms about of that. Yeah. Learning. Yeah, learning, adapting changes for for your quarterback. Again, like you're not you're not putting these guys in a position to succeed, and that is a failure on the coaching staff with all these transitions, right? I mean, think about it. Bo Prabula committed to Kirk Sharaka. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like let that, that one set it, right? Yeah, right. And then Aller was the first guy that Yursic offered, and that was his guy. And then Jackson Smolik was his guy. And then you look at it, Ethan Grunkemeyer was his guy, who's set to early enroll in January. So. Now you've got quarterbacks fitting probably one type of offense with one type of coordinator that they were bought into. And you have to wonder just what that whole picture looks like, especially because like Smolik's recruitment was really interesting and that it seemed like Yursich almost had a type that it was like, he wants these guys to get them before they get really big on the radar. uh, And then he'll kind of, kind of almost fall in love with them, so to speak. Right. That's when he recruits him. Um, but yeah, how do you kind of go with that? Like to me, that's that quarterback room is going to be fascinating. Yeah, and and the bright side is like uh, now uh, to be clear, 
Drew Allers, uh, barring a change of of his mind of where he wants to be, he's going to be the starting quarterback next year. I would be stunned if that was not the case. Like absolutely floored if that's not the case. Uh, but I, I think the the, yeah. the seems to be bought in here. <laughs> yeah, right? like I, I, seems to be right. That, well, that's the thing. Like these changes and with the portal, like we don't know. Like we really don't. Like we talked to Drew mm-hmm. last week. And so much has changed in those five, six days. Again, whatever it feels like, three months maybe. Uh, But whatever has changed in those last five, six days is monumental. Like his mind could have changed completely since then. We just have no idea right now. Uh, And hopefully we get to talk to Drew soon because like you said, that's going to be really important. But I do think the idea that the coach gets to run what they run regardless. Like you can't, to me, you can't go into this thinking, okay, I need someone to fit the personnel in 2024 because then that's how you make the wrong hire, right? That's how you make it for fit rather than making hiring the best person for the job. Uh, you know, I mentioned Sean Lewis. Cliff Kingsbury is on staff at USC, but not uh, an on-field coach right now, I don't oh. think. That, to me, is the funniest outcome. I am definitely rooting for it no from way. my standpoint. Absolutely <laughs> not. Listen, I'm not, again, not reporting, but it would be very funny. <laughs> uh, and I am all for the yeah, that is not those types of things. But no, I do think they they, yeah. they need to they need to make a hire that is going to come in, put their stamp on the offense, and let it be their offense. That matters more than absolutely anything right now. It cannot be James Franklin's offense. It has to be whoever they hire's offense. And until frankly, until it's proven otherwise, I don't know that there's a reason to believe that it will be, right? And when can they prove otherwise? August thirty first when they play West Virginia. 